Welcome back. You're watching the U.S. election dialogues. And for those of you just joining us, this is where things stand in the American election. These are the numbers and the math. 538 electoral college votes in all. The magic number is 270. Either candidate needs to get 270 or more to become the president of the U.S. Joe Biden currently has 264. That is six short of the magic figure. Donald Trump has 214. There are more, at least five states that are still counting their votes. Georgia, Nevada, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and Alaska. Joe Biden needs to win just one of them to win the presidency. Donald Trump needs to win at least four of them to make it. So it's an uphill task for the incumbent, the U.S. president. In Georgia, there are 16 electoral college votes. 99% of them have been counted, and it's very, very close. Joe Biden has 49.2% of the vote and Donald Trump has 49.5% of the vote. You see how close this is. Nevada, six electoral votes, 75% of votes have been counted. Biden has 49.3% and Trump has 48.7%. So this is where things stand right now. It's a very, very close race, as we've been saying. Uh, and our uh, panel of guests, our dialogue partners are still with us. Emily Sussman, I want to come, uh, come to you. In a few minutes from now, we understand that Team Trump will announce a lawsuit in Nevada alleging voter fraud. That's a state where Democrats seem to be winning and Joe Biden is slightly ahead. What is the strategy? Sorry, we had a little technical difficulty here. Sure. Look, they're not really Sorry, they're not releasing as many votes out of Nevada right now as other states releasing in small batches, partly because they don't want to feed more fodder, like to make it feel like when, as Trump keeps announcing lawsuits, it does make it feel like there's something to announce, right? Like there's something to be going after. The way the votes are reporting in in Nevada is the way they're reporting in in many other states. Rural counties that have smaller vote totals are reporting first. There's fewer votes to count. Large, and those tend to be Trump votes in general. Larger cities that have larger amounts of votes to count are going to report later uh, because they have more votes to count. Um, that's the case in Nevada. That's the case in, in, um, in every state. But I was actually just speaking right before this with, um, with officials in Nevada, and they were saying they're concerned about having poll, Trump supporting poll watchers storming their polling locations. Um, and that's part of the reason they're not releasing totals as they go, because it would look like a Trump lead in the beginning that would then shrink. And they don't know where it would go, but it would eventually shrink. And they're concerned about this for the sake of their poll watchers and the integrity of the election. Um, and so that's why they're holding it. Amanda Mackey, another state that... Uh... May on Pennsylvania. I'll just come to you. Amanda Mackey wants to leave in, in a few minutes from now, so I want to take this question with us, uh, with her. Another state that Donald Trump is looking at is Wisconsin. He wants a recount there because he feels the results should have gone in his favor, as indeed he feels for all the states. In 2016, against Hillary Clinton, Trump won the state by a narrow margin of 0.77 percent, a little more than 22,000 votes. She did not contest the result. Now, Joe Biden has won Wisconsin by some 20,000 votes. And Trump has asked for a recount. Is it only because he cannot stomach a loss, really? No, I think it's the, you know, looking at the numbers. The numbers are just not panning out. And, um, you know, there was a Wall Street Journal, Wall Street Journal editorial uh, uh, writer who basically took the numbers and, and she kind of dissected them and said, so basically you had, you know, 900,000 people that registered to vote on the day of the election. Uh, they allow for same day registration. And so you had just an astronomical number. Now, if that's the case, kudos to Wisconsin. Um, but I think when you see numbers that really deviate from standard norms, um, you know, it, it's something that does cause concern. I mean, there were 24,000 day of voters in Michigan. And you compare that to Wisconsin, there does seem to be quite a discrepancy. So, look, I think that these these um, numbers are constantly changing. Um, what I saw before I came on this segment was from um, CNN's John King, and he had, you know, Arizona, there were 450,000 uh, ballots left to still uh, count, and Trump was leading over 50 percent, between 55 to 58 percent. In Nevada, 200,000 were left to count, um, and then Trump was leading 50 to 52 percent. Now, now, I'm not saying that lead means that he wins. I'm just saying that that means there's a lead counts or ba ballots can come from, you know, rural parts of the state or more urban parts of the state, you know, strongholds that are Democratic and completely wipe that out. But shouldn't we all want this election to actually be known who decided this before this, 
you know, um, get that of hand. At a minimum, let's know who all has voted. Let's make sure every vote has counted. They're talking in Arizona about Sharpies bleeding through, if that's the case. You know, what does that mean? I think that we just need to know what exactly is happening. And, and it's a patchwork. Every state does things differently. So let's get to the bottom of this. Let's make sure that the ballots that are to be counted are counted. The ones that you know came in late or were missing, they should not have been cured um, without you know without the supervision of the the both parties being involved. And that just allows for a free and fair process. I think everyone should want transparency in our process, and there's nothing wrong with that. So I don't think it's you know sour grapes. I think it's more let's just see. Um, and as one of the other um, commentators on this on this panel said, you know, let's see where the chips will fall. If they fall in Joe Biden's favor, so be it. But let's make sure that fraud isn't happening or that, you know, ballots that are sh that shouldn't have been counted are counted. That is the most important part about the process of election integrity. That's a fair point. And uh, uh, the Trump camp, though, is still saying that they will contest every result. Uh, John Christopher Buer, the lawsuits and the demands to stop the count throw the legitimacy of the entire election process in doubt. Can Joe Biden survive Trump's legal blitz unscathed, considering the fact that the Supreme Court of America is now stacked with conservative judges? Well, that was the point of putting the, uh, the, the justice in there, was making sure she got uh, confirmed before this election. You know, there's some breaking news, though. Alle Allegheny County, which is Pittsburgh, which is a very big, uh, big city with a lot of people, they've, uh, they said they will not count additional ballots until tomorrow. So that w that may put the the understanding of the entire vote of Pennsylvania off to for another 12 hours or so. So that's a, that's interesting. And uh, I understand also that in Nevada there uh, there's going to be uh, some releasing of of more uh, more information in the next hour. So I have to say, Haki, I I've been watching what you're saying over the last few days, and your your knowledge of U.S. politics is. Is, it's extraordinary, and I give you great credit for that, and your and your audience. But I have to say, when you mentioned how how disturbing it is over here for Americans, one of my colleagues guests mentioned earlier, we have 50 different states, we have 50 different jurisdictions, we have 50 different election laws. So it's all very crazy to try to make sure that we get it all done properly, all by election night, as Donald Trump said. If he doesn't know by election night, then uh, it shows that the Democrats have created fraud. That's not fair. Now, uh, as I will say to Lieutenant Commander, uh, as a as branch, uh, an olive branch, what we need to do, and I agree with him, is come together as a nation, because we have been very, very, very injured and wounded, I will say, by what's gone on in the last four years and the nastiness that has come from both sides, I will say. But let's understand something. I was a Clinton appointee. I held three positions in his federal government, senior positions in communications at three federal agencies. And I know for a fact that Donald Trump has basically removed many, many individuals who were bureaucrats, who were top level professionals. I know personal friends in the State Department where we have what we call our soft diplomacy have left. If Joe Biden wins and he gets behind that Oval Office desk on the 20th of January, he has a lot of work to do and he has to completely reorganize and re reestablish and put all new people into these agencies. And a lot of them are gone. So we really need to, I guess, hope and prayers, whatever, to make sure there's a proper transition that the Trump administration folks meet with the Biden administration folks, if that's the way it is, and, and discuss with them. A real safe transition of power is what we must have. And Ab that's my thought for today. Absolutely. That would be the best case scenario. I have the latest trends. Uh, and, and this really is the land of possibilities. Anything can happen because you look at the numbers and they flip every minute, it seems. North Carolina, Biden has 48.7% of the vote. Donald Trump has 50.1%. So Trump is leading in North Carolina. Uh, uh, which has 15 electoral college votes. Pennsylvania, Biden 48.5%, Trump 50.3%. Pennsylvania, very important state, 
20 electoral college votes in Arizona. Biden leading again with 50.5% of the vote. Donald Trump, 48.1%. So this is how things stand right now. And we're talking about a peaceful transition and the healing of a country that has seen too much division and, and too much acrimony over this summer and through this election campaign. But the fact is, left and Rogers, uh, Trump's decision to not concede and his his persistent statements have triggered protests across the country. There are clashes, there are stabbings in Washington, D.C. yesterday, just a few blocks away from the White House. Won't Trump's battle for power throw America into more chaos, considering the fact that the pandemic is far from over and America remains the worst hit? President Trump is not responsible for the protest across the country. That's absurd. The fact of the matter is, is that the reason why there's protests across the country, it started off with the issue of Black Lives Matter and police brutality. And that exploded into what? It exploded into now a political agenda, a socialist political agenda. By the way, and you can check this out and fact check this, that there's a uh, as evidence that there has been foreign influences in fi financing some of these protests. So again, we're going back to blaming President Trump. It's just like when the when the, the right, all right, the extreme right uh, blames Joe Biden for no, stuff. Sir. Joe Biden is not responsible for what's going on in the streets, and neither is President Trump. The people responsible for what's going on in the streets are the people in the streets. We have to move forward, and we have to begin, as everyone on this panel said, and I'm sure you agree, uh, to begin the process of healing. And yes. I think part of the process is clarity. We've all agreed on that. Let's find some clarity. And it's very clear that the president is saying, stop the count. And that's what the people on the streets are saying. And then there are other people on the streets who are saying that every vote should be counted. So as leaders, you have to take responsibility for your words and the kind of reactions they trigger. To that extent, I think President Trump has to take part of the blame, if not all the blame, for what's happening on the streets of America. Um, well, I respectfully disagree with you. I don't see it that way. I'm here. I talk to people on the streets on both sides. But you know what? Let's agree to disagree. And I think uh, we should move on. Emily Sassman, your thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, I think the president has responsibility. I think he has responsibility for his words. I think what's been proven is that his supporters really, really take his word very highly above all other sources. Um, and so he needs to take responsibility for when he's he's stoking um, anxiety and distrust in the system in them. I think that, you know, I, I don't think it should be a political position to say that every vote should count. Um, unfortunately, I think that has become part of our extreme uh, politic polarization um, when the president is tweeting literally the words, stop the counting. Um, and has been saying for months that he didn't believe that votes that would come in by mail would be legitimate. Um, this is a legitimate way that people have been voting for a long time. It's actually not related to the pandemic. Uh, the military votes by mail, the elderly vote by mail, the president himself vote by mail. Um, and the fact that he has been questioning it for months was really making his supporters very anxious. Um, to be questioning as the results came in. Uh, I do believe there was strategy to understand on his part, part, on the campaign's part in particular, about the order of how the votes were going to come in. The fact that because he was pushing most of his, and by the way, his campaign was actually pushing some supporters to vote by mail and to vote early, um, which is counter to what he was saying publicly. But it was a campaign strategy to push some of them to vote by mail. And those votes should be counted, too, by the way. But I think that they understood the fact that because he was pushing most supporters to be voting same day on Election Day, those votes would get counted first. Um, and that the mail ballots would take a little bit longer to vote to count, partly because they weren't going through a machine, um, and partly because of the fact that there's actually been a, a strategy um, on the part of Republican state legislatures to say, don't count the votes earlier. And by the way, not just Republican legislatures. They do it in New York, too, which is Democratic run. Um, start counting them after Election Day. So I do believe that Trump, this is a, a strategy on behalf of the Trump campaign um, to sow doubt in the votes that would be coming in later and then would be changing the balance of power um, or not the, not the balance of power, rather, but the vote counts against him. So we could agree that silence is consent, correct? Joe Biden's silence with all the rioting and the burning of buildings and the assaults on police officers, silence for months. Never word, used the words law and order. So my point is no, this, is Joe, is, Joe Biden responsible, is, Joe, is Joe Biden responsible for the violent, violence on the streets by his silence? Of course not. And neither is President Trump. So the fact of the matter is, is look, uh, 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 we have to move forward. 
And we have to make sure that as we move forward, at least those of us on the ground, not truly involved in the uh, upper echelon of politics, will kind of lower the temperature and help get this country back together. I think uh, that, that you, well, this violence happened on the watch of Donald Trump. And uh, he was the president when, when all of this happened. And uh, through the summer when the protests happened, he called some of them looters. And they were looters indeed. But as president, you're not supposed to uh, just make allegations and not fix the situation. You can't blame the opposition for fixing, not fixing the situation. And that's where I stand. I think we'll not agree on that. And we all agree that we should move forward. But uh, John Christopher Bua, the the Biden campaign has just released a statement and they're talking about the misinformation campaign from the Trump camp. Now, earlier today, Eric Trump tweeted a fake video of ballots being burnt and the president keep, keeps claiming voter fraud without giving any conclusive proof. Do you think this fight against fake news is going to continue well after the last vote has been counted? I think as long as Donald Trump has his uh, disciples uh, ag agitated and, and ready to go, uh, he will maintain a certain sway with the very extreme right wing party, part of his party. I think those in Congress, the senators and members of Congress, like uh, I remember Barry Goldwater and, uh, and, uh, and his uh, two colleagues uh, that went to see Richard Nixon, and, and Goldwater said, Dick, you got to get out of this. And I won't say what kind of word he said, this leap house now. And Richard Nixon got out because they realized that Nixon was, in fact, hurting the party. When Donald Trump is uh, defeated, which will be soon, and he has to hopefully he will go to the inauguration like JFK and Eisenhower. And, and, and I remember the beautiful picture of FDR and Herbert Hoover, who both shared the same blanket in, the, in their car on the way from the White House to the Capitol. I don't know if Donald Trump will be able to do that, if he will be able to re reconcile and see this country. You know, he's never lost a battle. He's never lost a lawsuit. And I'm from New York. I grew up within a mile of Donald Trump. I knew who he was as a kid. And the fact is, the election is over. I'm not campaigning. But I have to say, he's an interesting character, whether he will maintain his 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 disciples and keep them keep feeding them you know he's not a young man or he will go in peace and maybe go go find uh, some peace for himself uh, i wish him the best but i think the country is going to have to heal and there's a lot of anger and you can hear some of it on this show and i and i i had, some of it came from me indeed and i understand that but there's a lot of that and it goes deep into our 330 million americans who are this literally on the edge of their seats these last few days, and it's not been easy for anybody. Right, and you know, uh, Twitter in the I, meantime I, is, is clearing up Donald Trump's tweets and the last one that he posted about 52 minutes ago saying that we are going to contest all the state's results where Joe Biden has won because there was fraud, I think has been uh, removed or hidden on Twitter. But here's what I have. I'll come to you, Lieutenant Rogers. The Biden camp has claimed victory in three states now. I have the figures here, Wisconsin, Michigan and Arizona. Uh, Joe Biden extending the lead in Nevada by 12,000 votes, uh, six votes on the line in Nevada. And uh, there is a lead for Joe Biden, it seems. They seem to have said that they have won this election. My question to you, Lieutenant Rogers, is very simple. I know we all want, the whole of America wants to move forward, leave the acrimony behind, the divisions behind. Is Donald Trump prepared to concede defeat? I believe that if the, at the end of the day that uh, Joe Biden is declared the winner, I believe President Trump is prepared to concede defeat. And I agree with my colleague who just talked. I know we had a little bit of a back and forth, but you know what? He's as passionate as I am, and I do respect him for standing up for what he believes in. But I agree with him on this point, that uh, I would hope also that the president of the United States would stand shoulder to shoulder with the victor, if Joe Biden is the victor, and present a healing message to this country. I'd be profoundly disappointed if he didn't do that, but I believe he will because at the end of the day, he loves this country, and moving forward, I believe he will do what's best for the country. Very well said, sir. Uh, I want to ask the same question of Emily and uh, John Christopher. Emily, let's begin with you. Do you believe that once by the end of this night, when, when the result is out, if the result is out, 
Donald Trump will not take it to court further and will say, all right, these are the figures and I seem to have lost this election and that is where it ends. We really don't have any indication that he would accept the results at this point. I mean, as the states keep getting called, he keeps announcing new lawsuits. I mean, to the point about, you know, whether whether the lawsuits are frivolous or legitimate or counting votes. I mean, the lawsuit that is in, uh, I believe the lawsuit in Georgia is act is asking the counters to do to follow the law that they are already following. So it, that is what a frivolous lawsuit is, is to be um, is to bring a lawsuit on something that is already happening. So the fact that he is willing to bring suits in every state, like kind of really digging for something to sue on, would certainly give every indication, plus his comments, the fact that he's going to be um, fighting in every state that he loses, certainly indicates that it'll be a while before he'd be willing to accept those results. Look, I truly believe that we, I truly hope that we can move forward and have a peaceful transition of power. Um, but the indication even in how he took the transition from power from President Obama also does not show that. Um, I have many friends who are in the White House during the transition. Uh, they offered to meet with the Trump transition team many times to sit down with them, to show them how the phones worked. Um, and the Trump transition team did not take them up on that. They were not interested in learning um, from the Obama transition team. Um, and I think we can all remember back to to Trump's inauguration speech where there was a real question there with a lot of his supporters had gone and saying, look, he's going to leave the He's going to leave the bolstering behind the I'm only for some Americans. Once we get into the inauguration, then you're really going to see that he's for all Americans. Um, and that, in fact, was not what we saw out of his inauguration speech and he continued to not to see. I mean, even the, the um, through these debates when Biden kept speaking very clearly to the camera to say, look, I will be the president. He said this yesterday again. He said, I will be the president for all Americans, even those who didn't vote for me. And I will take their their factors into consideration um, in lawmaking. Uh, and that actually really has not been what we've seen from Trump. So it's a little bit hard to see how he'll accept the results quickly, although I certainly hope that he does. John Christopher Buard, do you think this will be decided in courts? No, I don't. I think it will be decided when the, the, the folks at the uh, Trump headquarters, which is now the White House because he's totally uh, politicized the White House, not only uh, the Rose Garden, but now the East Room, et cetera. Uh, it will come. It will come when when the president himself says to his uh, his uh, advisors, his minions, "Look, that's it. Uh, it. You can't sue your way through everything. You can't sue every state. When you had twenty thousand votes or at, and, and 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 more, you can't litigate that. He's litigated his entire life. He learned that from his father." Uh, I grew up, as I said, I'm from Queens. You may not realize that. I'm I'm near Donald Trump. He well, is a lawsuit guy. That's what he does, and he will do that. And then, but then he's not really that 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 cunning. He will realize, you know, the jig is up. Uh, I will either go back to Mar-a-Lago, or maybe someone will offer him a nice uh, position somewhere. And uh, one of his supporters, I don't want to say a foreign person. Uh, we'll say, come on, you can come with me. And we'll, we'll leave it at that. Right. One of our viewers has sent a meme. It says, why can't Trump go to the White House anymore? Because it is for Biden. You add the two, it's forbidden. Uh, but the world is watching what's happening, and uh, we, are, we are awaiting the final count. Thanks very much, uh, John Christopher Bua, Emily Sussman, and Lieutenant Roger. Thanks. Thank you very much for joining us here on VR. It was a pleasure joining all of you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so all. much.